I'm presenting on behalf of a larger team which took part in this uh, present stock taking exercise actually after five years of the distance learning program. And the main message of this first slide is already that um, it involves people uh, from uh, three different uh, international organizations, um, including uh, Barbara uh, D'Andrea, uh, who is in charge of the International Trade Statistics section at WTO, Marki Muriawan, who is in charge of Trade and Industry Statistics section at UNSD, Mark Asaf, who coordinates the Train for Trade program, and um, Noor Banar, uh, Dominique uh, Chantrel, and uh, Thomas uh, Kulaga, who work at UNCTAD in uh, statistics uh, and in the Train for Trade program. Um, let me begin with a, a few words about the motivation. Um, just to, uh, this chart is just to illustrate um, that a global trade data is a special in that it is really depending on the different pieces which come from individual countries. And uh, we have globally adopted concepts and definitions to ensure to ensure that the pieces are comparable and that they fit well together. This is the IMTS, uh, the in, uh, manual uh, and uh, uh, the compilation guide, and uh, the MSITS, the manual for the um, compilation of statistics in trade and services. But what is also important is that we have compilation skills in the, in the countries, uh, which ensure that these different bricks, which we see here, the different pieces are of good quality. And here the demands have become uh, higher and higher over the years. People need more and more detailed data. Um, the data have to be accurate and it is not easy all the time to uh, produce um, high quality data because there are much many obstacles in uh, trade statistics involved. And um, so uh, training is important and uh, countries expressed increasing needs uh, for technical assistance that they can comply with these demands. So um, UNSD, UNCTAD and uh, WTO, we all received requests from countries for um, technical assistance coming from central banks, from customs organizations, and uh, national statistical offices, which are all involved at the national level in the compilation of trade statistics. So our idea was to join forces and to um, supply a joint capacity building uh, in the form of a training. Uh, which has the aim to strengthen the compilation skills uh, for trade statistics in the countries. So this is the context. Um, I will uh, go ahead. Uh, the, the presentation is structured as follows. I will first speak about the design of the training, then about the outcomes, and then the conclusions. Uh, we decided for distance learning, as this has particular advantages, uh, for capacity building of that type. Uh, first of all, it is without borders. It is really uh, possible to reach the whole world and no travel is needed and uh, people can take the training from each place of the world, in fact, at very low marginal costs. If one additional person is trained, the training material is there, it can just be rolled out online. So. Um, it, is, uh, it does not create any additional cost if we have an additional um, person uh, who uh, participates in the training. So we can almost say that it's a non-rival good. Then it is easy to fit to a trainee's uh, daily routines because it is self-paced. People can take the training whenever they want. And then it is also easy to adapt it to the different needs. Um, it can, you can just change the training material when you see that something, uh, the needs have changed or if uh, uh, in a particular country compilers have a, a specific need and then you just roll out to the whole community again. Uh, but there are also challenges. One is of course the technical infrastructure. Uh, the learners need a good uh, internet access uh, so that they can uh, benefit uh, from the whole uh, uh, um, possibilities of the training. And then on the side of the organizers, we need a good uh, learning management system. Uh, so a platform 
which takes care that uh, all the uh, training instruments uh, uh, work correctly and uh, can be uh, reached by all participants. And um, also, which makes a little bit of monitoring that you can see um, uh, how, are, how is the success of the training, how good behave the trainees and do uh, a certain statistics. And um, so it's a challenge to build up such a technical system. Then another challenge is the social distance. Um, it is always different if you are face to face in one room than if you go over internet and uh, when you cannot see each other. And uh, uh, studies have in fact shown that the learning curve is much flatter in single than in uh, group learning uh, when, because uh, it is now the self-paced character. Uh, so this is another challenge. This self-paced of the online training um, has the character that you are on your own. You sit in front of your computer, you learn, and um, when you are together in one room in a group, you, you simply learn better. So, but we thought uh, our train for trade program has certain mechanisms uh, to our certain experience uh, and uh, has uh, developed some strategies how to comply, how to um, deal with these um, challenges. And um, so the underlying principles of these courses is that the training is facilitated. So it's not purely safe paced. There are also facilitators involved. Um, there's a complementary face-to-face -face component and this is an important aspect. So it's not purely online, but at the end we offer a, a, a on-site workshop where a, a selected group of, of the participants, they meet together, they involve into deeper discuss discussions uh, they listen to presentations and they do group exercises all together. So this is a, a very uh, special element of our um, program. And I think it helped uh, for the motivation of the course incredibly and also to build up linkages between the uh, trainees. Um, then finally, it's a training based on content, not on instructors. So that means we really try to develop a very good uh, course materials, which can then be given into the hand of anybody who will teach based on those. But it is not so much dependent on who teaches, but it is uh, as the training material is well developed. And as we have also guidance to the teachers how to use it, um, um, it uh, the, the biggest role, the most important role is played by the training material, not by the instructors. And finally, we are building on the blended learning initiative, which is an uh, UN wide activity uh, initiative within the national accounts uh, program. And uh, there we get uh, support in terms of knowledge, in terms of experience of really the uh, latest uh, methods. And uh, so we are not starting from zero. Uh, so this is just a quick diagram, uh, a diagram which uh, to quickly show you um, how the method is built. It's called the train X method. Uh, we distinguish between three big stages. One is to analyze the needs for training. So there we identify the target group and uh, what are their specific uh, needs? What do they need to know? Then we have um, the development of the training material where we um, think about um, how, is, uh, how should be the course is structured, in which sequence, which instruments should we use. And then we deliver the training. And this includes also the review and evaluation. <clears throat> in the first stage, we identified the target group. And uh, we have, in fact, uh, two, uh, two parts of the target group. One is the primary target group which consists of the statistics compilers, so really the people who um, develop the statistics. Then we have a secondary target group, which are the statistics users. So people who interpret the trade data, who work with the trade data to do their analysis. And um, those have uh, specific needs, um, enhanced knowledge of concepts and methods, enhanced compilation skills, and guidance in solving specific uh, compilation challenges. 
Then about the design of the course in the second stage, um, we have one course in services statistics, uh, in services trade, uh, in statistics of trade and services, and one course in international merchandise trade statistics. So these are different courses which are rolled out at different times of the year. Each course has six modules, where each module lasts for one week. And um, our instruments are online lectures. So uh, we have a lecturer who, who explains things, who teaches things. We have a manual where participants can read and do their own review of the, of the content learned and uh, look deeper into specific questions, what they didn't understand. We have an online forum where experts uh, answer to questions and they also facilitate discussions. So um, there people can, like in a chat room, they can uh, meet virtually and exchange experiences, ask questions and ask, how is it done in your country? And this is a specifically interesting um, aspect because we who are involved as uh, facilitators, we also learn a lot about that because we understand what are the problems in the countries to compile the trade data. And, um, and we, we, can, we can give our experience and uh, we can uh, somehow support interaction between the learners. Then we have quizzes and tests to see, um, uh, to evaluate if the content has really been understood. And, if, um, and then we have at the end of the um, e-learnings, after the e-learning, after these six weeks, uh, we organize an on-site workshops where a selected group of trainees, um, usually those who are the, um, the best or who have been recommended by partner organizations, they are invited to attend. And um, there, as I say, uh, we have deeper discussions, we have group exercises, um, we have um, we listen to uh, specific uh, presentations on uh, special compilation challenges and so on. Uh, also taking account the needs of the country in which we organize this uh, on-site workshop. It is sometimes in South Africa, it was once in the Caribbean. So it's at different places on the world of the world and everywhere people have different needs. Unfortunately, during the pandemic, we had to exchange, we had to substitute this with uh, webinars. Um, that, that way we could reach more people. In the on-site workshops, we have around 30. In the webinars, we have 100 to 200, but we cannot uh, get this depth of discussion in the webinars. And um, we don't really know, do the people really follow the course or are they doing their um, own work uh, behind? So and the discussions are simply not so uh, active. <coughs> um, so, we have a preparation phase where we um, prepare the course, we design, designate the facilitators, we register the applicants. Then we have this e-learning phase for six weeks where we undertake the course, we take final, um, participants take the final exams. And then we have the face-to-face -face phase where we have the workshop. And then and most importantly, we have the reviewing. Um, the participants also fill feedback questionnaires after each a module which they do and also after the on-site workshop and uh, from there we get an idea what are the main problems. In addition we can uh, analyze the performance which they show in the quizzes and in the test and um, based on this we can look into we can see where, where were the difficulties what was not so motivating for the people and things like that and we review all that we try to learn from that for the next phase and we write it down in a final report. <clears throat> so now I come to the uh, outcomes. And uh, based on our learning management system, we can develop statistics and see uh, how was the success, how, um, how many people have passed the courses and how was the satisfaction and so on. So here we see, first of all, the number of persons trained. And it is um, uh, striking that uh, we have a, a strong increasing trend. So we started with uh, uh, two to 300 people in courses for trade and services statistics. 
in 2016 and 2017. In 2018, we added the course on international merchandise trade statistics. So we remained uh, in that number. But then in 2019, uh, we have a kind of um, more, than more than exponential increase, I would say. So the participants rose uh, uh, to over to around 1,500. And then in 2020, we have uh, 2,016 uh, participants. So all in all, we trained uh, 5,162 persons. 49.4% um, were male, were female, 50.6% 50 were male. So the cause is almost uh, gender balanced. So why this uh, strong increase in 2019? Um, it seems this was, was due to the lifting of the registration limit. Before we had said in the uh, trade and services cost, we don't want um, a higher number of participants than can at the end participate in the workshop. So sorry to interrupt, Ono. Can you start wrapping it up? Sure, I'm almost finished. And uh, uh, so this had technical reasons and uh, advancement of the train for trade uh, platform and so on. And um, here we see the spread over the coverage of countries. And we, in fact, have participants from 200 countries. So our training really reached uh, the, almost the whole world, we can say. And uh, people came from different, uh, uh, all the different domains, which are most of them, which are uh, involved in a compilation of trade statistics, like from National Statistical Office, uh, from, uh, min, uh, from a Central Bank, and so on. Others are from statistics users as we wanted, and also a few, uh, including a few from private enterprises. Here is the development of the success and satisfaction rate. And uh, we see that the success rate uh, more or less stabilized uh, at around uh, 80% uh, from uh, 2018. Um, it had gone a little bit up before, and the satisfaction rate uh, is increasing still. Uh, so it seems it, it can still grow and it's uh, at the moment at around uh, 80, uh, 88% in this year, in 2020. So uh, to wrap up and to take stock, um, we saw that in our training, the number of participants has been growing. We have reached uh, global coverage and our training is gender balanced. The target groups are reached. Our success rate is stable at 80% success satisfaction rate still increasing. These are good news. And um, a big advantage is also that we have a low impact of COVID-19. Um, the only impact which we see is really in the webinars because there the discussions cannot be so deep and we don't have so much interaction. <coughs> we have some lessons learned. Um, first of all, we have the feeling that our interagency cooperation really paid off. We could use a synergy, we could realize synergies, and we could also make use of our comparative advantage because advantages, because we have a, a direct access to a pool of experts working at international organizations who know much about um, compilation of international trade statistics and especially about the underlying concepts and methods. And we also have infrastructure to reach the countries and we have experience in technical assistance. And um, then another lesson learned is that the face-to-face -face interaction is really an important component. Um, we see that this increased the motivation. This led also to follow up later and um, helped uh, um, transmitting specialized knowledge really to, uh, to the participants. And finally, also the compilers and users have their specific needs. This is what we see in the um, feedback questionnaires. Um, users sometimes have difficulties with, um, with the, uh, dry concepts uh, of learning these concepts. They more want to know how to interpret the data, where can I get the data sources. But they are more our secondary target group. Our primary target group is really the compilers. But based on that, we think maybe we could offer small modules which are more tailored to the needs of the users. 
Um, so our tentative plans, this is the last slide, is um, we want the on-site workshops really to resume after COVID-19 is over. Um, we, in the feedback, we also got uh, um, suggestions to increase, to introduce more interactivity into the lecture. So this is something we could take on board. However, this will create extra costs. We will have to analyze that carefully. We want to uh, use new languages so that our training can be um, also um, used more in uh, Spanish speaking countries, Arab countries and so on. And we think about new components, as I said before, maybe tailored specifically to the user's needs. So I'm sorry that it took a, I took a few minutes longer, but uh, I thank you very much for your attention.